Hi, all you BC WrestlePod nerds out there. And welcome to another rendition of the Collision Collective Review, your weekly AEW Collision Review squad team, whatever the kids are saying these days. It has been quite some time, but we are back to our regular normal scheduled content, kind of. And today... Until next week. <laughs> until next... Uh, me and you will talk about when we'll we're done because we, we got to figure it out because it's going to be yeah. a busy weekend, this upcoming weekend. But I am Mikey, also known as El Jefe around the BC WrestlePod ports ner- out here. And joining me this week is the one and only Adolfo El Buntador the second. We just did Rampage not too long ago and we're back at it again. <laughs> Buenos dias. Buenas mi gente. I hope everyone is out there uh, doing as good as they can. Uh, and if not, let us uh, have these moments of wrestling talk uh, instill a little joy uh, if you're not having any any joy currently. Mm, yes, we are here to bring you the copious amounts of joy. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be fun. So we are going to be covering AEW Collision. And then we're also going to briefly talk about Battle at the Belts 10 at the very end of this review since we had a three hour block of AEW this past weekend and spoiler alert we're also gonna have another three hour block next week which you know stay tuned for those announcements later but it's just me and Adolfo our other co-host Luis unfortunately could not be here so hopefully he'll be here next week to cover that and Rampage we're gonna make him watch Rampage it's gonna be so good It's going to be fantastic. Little, but uh, I'm, a, for, I'm, a, I'm a little biased, but it's it's the better of the AEW shows. Rampage. Little little bias. Little bias. Rampage has <laughs> the most fun, I think. I will say, though, between Dynamite and Collision, Collision, I have a preference for, but I like Dino. I like all the products, but Rampage is where I go to have the most fun. And Collision is pretty much where there's a lot of solid wrestling, if I'm going to be completely honest. Dynamite yeah. is... The combination of both and that could be a good thing or a bad thing but i digress let's jump into this week's collision so i was about we, to say. we get a recap really quickly at the top non-aew related stuff but kind of because it involves john moxley over the weekend at windy city riot which is new japan strong's you know u.s show that happened in chicago John Moxley beat Tetsuya Naito to become the new IWGP World Champion. And so John Moxley is the top dog of New Japan with that title. He will be yeah. on Dynamite this upcoming Wednesday, but it was reported by his news outlets, including people at Fightful. And I trust Fightful with my life with my wrestling news because they're pretty good at getting sources. That Mox is going to be taking some time off of AEW television in order to fulfill his duties as IWGP champion, which means, and it goes into what we're getting next to kick off collision is we get a backstage promo from the remnants of Blackpool combat club, which right now currently sits at Claudio Castagnoli and Brian Danielson. So with Mox gone and Wheeler, Yuta still out on injury. It's really just these two. And they cut a promo to hype up what the main event for this evening in which they're going to take on the Don Callis family and answering back that, you know, on Rampage, the Don Callis family wanted Kyle Fletcher and Power Hobbs to break and destroy them. Must protect the golden goose. <laughs> Will Ospreay's the golden goose. It was protect. really hard not to s- protect say anything for collision or battle of the belt with this whole thing during rampage last night golden goose golden goose hey. no, we're, <laughs> we're gonna put it on a t-shirt right yeah right the golden goose anyway yep so they cut the promo uh which you know it, it it was what it was it was your standard uh at least to me it was the standard collision promo you know um we I we had the promo from on Friday night, so like, uh, it was neither good nor bad. It just I was like, okay, cool, let's get to it. I mean, I liked Danielson cut the passionate promo like he always does, and then I've said this for weeks upon end. I like Claudio in the ring, but his mic work is no, still not the best. Not the best. He's the no. weakest talker of the whole thing, and that's saying something. But 
I was still excited. That's one half. This is going to set up our main event later in the evening, which then cuts to the ring where we get our first opener match of the whole entire episode. And my God, I had such a good time with this. This was a trios match, House of Black. So I almost said Alistair Malachi Black. Yep. <laughs> Buddy Matthews and Brody King taking on the team of what Andrew has dubbed them as charter flight because it's not <laughs> because you had <laughs> you had Dante Martin, <coughs> Action and Dreddy, and Matt Seidel. So it's not full top flight. So it's just a charter flight. Yep. But this is exactly what I wanted when I saw this on paper. I'm like, just give me crazy moments and let my high flyers fly. And they did not disappoint. <laughs> I really enjoyed this match. I also think I was like. Did House of Black use a new finisher? <laughs> yeah, so I um and I had to I, I got the help of Alice uh with this match because uh I had to put Loxus to bed, so I missed it. But then I rewatched it this morning, uh, and I'm echoing a lot of her sentiments because I agree. Uh it was a really fun match in that you had charter flight. Uh, doing their, you know, crazy high flying stuff. But then you had uh, the House of Black kind of, you know, lock that down. But then at the same time, they had to go unconventional to match uh, Charter Flight's speed and agility um, that was coming out. Uh, so the finisher, um, that new finisher was probably one we're not going to see House of Black using often uh but it was definitely uh, a breath of fresh air and uh you know just a testament as to these wrestlers and 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 how good they are because they can um you know they can work with different styles and not tell the same story sorry the baby just oh absolutely the on the floor and the dog tried to you're hear. totally okay no don't let him eat it <laughs> <laughs> but I had I had a really fun time with this match and you know we're keeping everyone separated we're getting everyone wins either as separately or as a faction because we have this big old six man that is happening at the time of this recording next weekend at Dynasty with House of Black versus Copeland Kingston and Briscoe so I thought this was a really fun opener and I was super happy with it <sighs> Which then cuts into a very fun backstage promo. And then I just rolled my eyes at the following thing. So we cut backstage where we have Timeless, Tony Storm, and Mariah May. And Tony is asked about, you know, Thunder and Deanna and just everyone that's hanging around this whole entire championship picture storyline right now. And so Tony just basically states that, especially with Lightning Daffodil, as she has called <laughs> Thunder Rosa. She basically says that no woman is going to be able to take the title from her. And same thing with Diana, and she even calls out Azumi too, who she'll have a match with later this evening. And that everyone needs to have their chest up <laughs> and be. I'll prepared. say it, chest, chest up, tits out, and beware the shoe. Yep. <laughs> I'll say it. I don't care. Are, are we ten seconds in? I don't give a fuck. I'll say it. Um, Adolfo yeah. can be more free because Mikey's <laughs> editing this. <laughs> um, yeah, you know uh, that was that was definitely another one of the enjoyable promos um, that Timeless ha uh, has cut. Uh, you know the uh, and I f I feel that it piggy uh, piggybacked really well off of. Uh, the promo that Thunder uh, cut later in the night, um, especially uh, in in the shift of moods, which you know we'll, we'll talk about later, or we can talk about now if, if if that's okay. I mean, let's just let's you know what, let's just couple it because I feel that all three women promos kind of follow in order and they kind of go together. So we yeah. can talk about Thunder right now because later in the evening, Tony Schiavone is up on the ramp and Thunder comes out. And she cuts a promo talking about what happened during the toast ceremony that happened on Dynamite, which 
I don't know if you watched it, Adolfo, but it was trash. <laughs> like it was literally only 15 seconds of a promo. I'm like, <sighs> I was like, Tony Khan, you're messing it up for me. But Thunder addresses that. And she also basically gives me what I always want from Thunder, which is she wants to become a three time <laughs> champ. No, Even though she technically, think. yeah, because she technically did not lose the belt. Mm -hmm. She did, technically did not lose the belt. Uh, and that was Tony, the basis. Of, which yeah. Tony Schiavone did point out at the beginning of the, the segment. And, you know, she wants to get that title back because, like you said, she never truly lost the title because she gave it up. Well, okay. So to fill in the AEW lore, because they had an interim one and then she gave it up because of injury. So then Tony Storm became interim and then she became the real one. It's a whole mess. I hated the whole interim champion thing because it made a mess of the women's and the men's division. But Thunder is coming for that title and she's going to take down Tony at Dynasty to get the title back that she never truly lost. Which then goes into the other promo we got after this with Diana Perazzo basically chastising <laughs> Thunder saying that I was trying to help you, but if you want to go at this alone, fine. I see how it is, but I'm also not giving up my things because I still have beef with Tony for what happened too. So I'm going to do what I need to to get back into the championship picture and damned whoever <laughs> gets in my way. And I'm like, there are two possibilities here because we still have a week. One, I smell shenanigans at the pay-per-view where Deanna and Tony feud. No, not Tony. Deanna messes with Thunder and then they feud for that. Or somehow Deanna finds a way to make this a triple threat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, the Deanna Parazzo's spot, I thought, was the weakest of the three. Uh, so timeless Tony Storm, very entertaining, very ch tongue in cheek, uh, you know, promo like she cuts. Uh, Thunder Rosa comes out and she gives this just uh, very emotional, very empowering speech. You know, thanking the fans first and then addressing the championship picture. Uh, you know, so the the juxtaposition of of the two um, of the two spots uh was very interesting and played i felt very well uh you know thunder rosa um a lot of strong words you know uh that like you can't kill what's already dead um you know and like she's really gunning for it uh and my personal bias aside like i would love especially just after that spot, that speech that Thunder Rosa gave, I would love if she won the championship, you know? Um, and uh, Deanna Parasso, uh, I hate to say it, but it kind of feels like she's the odd woman out in this whole thing. Um, if I would be fine if going forward, because like towards the end of her spot, uh, that's when she switched and was like, you know, uh, talking about how she was, got, he, she was coming from Mariah May. Um, and like, I, I get, I get that Deanna and Tony have beef, uh, but let, if this, yeah, if this is going to be like a three, like a three, a three way thing, um, you know, let's go for it. Uh, let's, let's try to give Deanna a little bit more, uh, to work with though. Um, other than that, I would be more than happy. Like if Thunder Rosa, if Deanna at dynasty, if Deanna came out, caused Tony storm, the championship, Thunder Rosa becomes the champion. And then, uh, Deanna and Tony can continue their, uh, their, uh, their rivalry uh, because you know prior to this uh, it, i really did enjoy the the buildup between uh tony and diana you know and they do have that history uh and from a storytelling standpoint it is it's very intriguing so um that's that's what i hope happens uh well you know only time will tell 
Yes. Only time will tell. I am excited because I was afraid of what direction we were going with all this, but it seems we're doing something fun. So I'm excited for this match at Dynasty, which then goes into... Uh, we're still doing this thing, so we get like a cut backstage segment from Dynamite in which Chris Jericho goes up to Taz and asks Taz to mediate a meeting between him and Hook so Chris can explain what happened on Dynamite in that trios match that they had together. And Taz begins to explain, you know, when when Hook gets upset, when he gets pissed off, was Taz's words that he is... <laughs> a different type of person but i also kind of like taz in this and saying it's like uh hook is a grown man why don't you go ask him yourself kind of vibes but taz agrees that he will try to talk to hook and then we get the announcement that we're gonna have this mediation segment on dynamite i was like what for just let hook beat chris jericho up like that's all that needs to happen yeah but didn't hook already beat chris jericho up before i mean what exactly are we trying to do here? Uh, I, like, I have complained in the past that we haven't had enough hook, and now we are getting more hook. And uh, just, to me, got thrown into the Chris Jericho black hole. <laughs> well, yeah. To, so to me, that we're getting more hook. All right, that's cool. But at, you know, at the same time, like, why are we putting him with Chris Jericho? It just it seemed very left field when it first happened. You know, it seemed very left field after. Or was it pr uh, prior to their match uh, where he was like, I want to test Hook out and see, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, uh, I I'm not I'm, I'm not hooked in this story. I'm definitely not hooked in the story uh, and definitely uh, the promo was felt weak to me. And I'm just I'm not. I'm not excited for this sit down mediation thing. Editing Mikey. Uh, I need one moment to go check on Loxus. So yeah, no problem. So okay. grab a snack and we'll be right back. <sighs> Let's just move on from that. Yes. So then we get into our next match of the evening. So this, I really enjoyed this match because this is what I've wanted the whole freaking time. But we get Katsuyori Shibata versus Lee Moriarty. I just want more Lee Moriarty. I feel like he never gets used enough on AEW television, even though technically he's also in Ring of Honor, but those lines have been blurred. So who knows at this point? Right. But I thought this was a very, very good match from both technicians because Lee Moriarty is technically a technical wrestler. Shibata is that very strong style of Japanese wrestling. I really enjoyed this match and Shibata got a victory back after getting pinned by Moriarty on Dynamite. So now technically they're one in one. So I would love one more match between these two to settle the score. But I thought this was fantastic. I love these two wrestlers so much. Yeah, um, it was as far as matches go, it was a really well built match. Uh, both wrestlers really got at it. They told a great story. Uh, and I, I agree, and so does Django, um, that we would love to see uh, the third rubber match uh, between these two because uh, they just it was it was great work, great work. Uh, the first match was great work. This match was great work. Um, so we're 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 ready for the rubber match. If you want to make that a, a zero hour match for Dynasty, do it, Tony Khan. Do the thing. Yes, that would be fantastic. And then afterwards, the match is over. Shane Taylor comes into the ring and attacks Shibata, which then prompts Hook to come out for the save. And not to mention, we also had Anthony Ogogo on commentary during this match. So it seems that we're not quite done with the Shane Taylor promotions crew taking on Hook, Shibata, and I guess Chris Jericho at this point. Who knows anymore? Yeah, you see, like, that story intrigues me more shane taylor productions versus hook and friends yes you know, that's more interesting that and that's that's interesting absolutely so as you know shane taylor gets out of the ring shane taylor promotions walks away with shibata and hook in the ring so obviously we are not quite done yet because we will briefly talk about it at the end because Shane Taylor and Hook had go at it at Battle of the Belts, which we'll talk about when we get there. 
which then prompts us because there was also a lot of promos to talk about Battle of the Belts, which is really weird in terms of pacing. It's just like, hey, we're on collision, but we got to talk about this third hour that we're doing too. But I am okay with what happened next because we had the whole minions in training, the whole MIT squad of Lexi, Athena, and Billy Starks. Anytime these three are on my screen it is absolutely my favorite. <laughs> but Lexi's just like, so Athena, how do we feel about going up against Red Velvet? And Billy kind of be like, you know, Athena, Red actually made it very far in the te television title tournament hinting that she shouldn't take her lightly but then athena just goes into her athena that she's the best and she even said it she's the best world champion not women's champion she's the best world champion that ring of honor has right now and athena you're not wrong <laughs> uh, yeah i will i will even uh and i i will take this heat so please come at me about this but i will even uh say that athena is the greatest world champion in recent history period you know uh because her reign um she has she's defended you know uh, she did have little, that little spot where, where she was injured uh but she's defended all of her matches have been great matches all of her spots um have been great spots uh all all her opponents have always felt as if they were a threat uh so you know whatever lightning that she has in a bottle um that she's been using you know i i hope that uh i hope there's still a little left in that bottle um you know because again this this promo was great uh we'll talk about it later but the match uh itself was great uh and athena is just is a fantastic world champion she absolutely is, and it is fantastic. Which then we go to another promo, this time with the Undisputed Kingdom, talking about everything that's going on. There's there's just a lot of backstage promos, and I'm just like, what are we doing? There's a lot of backstage promos for Battle of the Belts that kind of threw Collision off a little bit, but Undisputed Kingdom was there. It was mostly Roderick Strong talking about how he has his eliminator match against rocky romero coming up and then the thing with kyle o'reilly being in the background it's just like and he's the greatest yep. intercontinental champion blah 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 this is for me personally this has been roddy's biggest issue even when he was in wwe like you are the international champion my guy like we gotta come out stronger on these promos because they're very not great <laughs> They're very flat a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, I and I might be alone on this island, and if I am, that's fine. But it feels like if you take Roddy, uh, Roddy Strong out of the Undisputed Kingdom, then he's nothing. You know, uh, and I mean that from a. Uh, uh, from like a, a, a personality slash uh, spot standpoint, you know, uh, it, it feels like he like he needs the rest of the undisputed kingdom around him. He needs Taven and he, he needs um, Wardlow and he needs uh, Adam was, Cole and, and, and Adam Cole. Like he needs them uh, so that he can function but like, if you take him out of that, then he like he wouldn't be able to, you know, he'd be lost in the shuffle. He'd be lost in the shuffle. For you know, for example, um, and and this might highlight what I'm saying a little bit better. Take uh, Jay White, okay? Jay White functions fantastic in a group with the Bang Bang um, Gang. Uh, he functions well with just, um, you know, Juice Robinson when they're doing the tag team thing. But then when he's by himself, he functions perfectly fine by himself and he can cut great promos by himself roderick strong just kind of feels uh, he like i know sesame street's going on in the background but roderick strong feels like a muppet you know and without the rest of undisputed kingdom there like he would he would just be like Bleh. 
I have always said that Roderick thrives when he's in a faction, but because Adam Cole is injured, I, how do I put this nicely? Adam Cole is injured, so it makes it very difficult because he's the leader, but because he can't be there all the time due to injury and whatnot, so Roderick has kind of become the unofficial leader of the Undisputed Kingdom, which... In hindsight, kind of makes sense because Adam Cole and Roderick are best friends and everything. But you pick the worst person to be the face of this and do all the talking. Now, granted, because Maria Maria is doing stuff with, you know, the Mama's Boys in Ring of Honor. So she's not going to be there. But you, honestly, I would have preferred to have Matt Taven or even Mike Bennett be the unofficial leader because they cut better promos and they're better talkers than Roddy. It's... Roddy's in-ring ability is great when given the chance, but I've never liked his character work because it's always the same. It's always been flat, <sighs> you know. And it makes it really difficult because Adam Cole is out on injury still. So we're trying to figure out we're trying to keep the story going. And I'm sitting here. I'm just like, but I know MJF is not back yet, but I thought the whole purpose of the acclaim and the Bang Bang Gang getting together was because both of them have beef with y'all like. Why are right. we not doing anything? It's a whole mess right now. Yeah, in this that's division. That just, it's yeah, a whole that's, mess. Yeah, yeah. But mo moving on, moving on, moving on. Well, speaking of messes from a booking standpoint, because this was just thrown in here as much as I enjoyed these two, we had Daniel Garcia versus Angelico for no apparent reason. Right. Yep. It was yep. just like, all right, uh, who do we have on the roster? Daniel Garcia, Angelico, get on out there and put on a clap and put on a match. I'm like. I enjoyed this match, but my biggest critique of this is like it was just randomly put here. There's no story going on with either one of these two right now. And I'm just like, I enjoyed well, the match, but why? I mean, <laughs> I mean, other other than we want to get well, we want to keep Daniel Garcia on people's minds, you know, and uh, get him uh, W's going, uh, uh, get him more W's, you know, so he can get back into that whatever championship picture they want. They want him into the match was great. Uh, you know, Angelico again, Angelico and Daniel Garcia. Uh, you know, it's a testament as to how well these these two work. Um, they did, you know, they put on a uh, an enjoyable match. Um, I, I, I'm not going to say it was like nail biting or anything like that, but it was an enjoyable, solid match. You know, uh, which got Daniel Garcia a hard earned uh, win. Uh, which again, I. I think in regards to stories, that's, that's the story. That's the story that, that they're trying to tell. Uh, my dog is telling me that he's got to go um, potty. Uh, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's the story that they're trying to tell is they want to keep Daniel Garcia uh, in the forefront. Um, and uh, at the same time, also get, get him um, some hard fought W's. So people take him as a legitimate threat and not just like a bunch of squash matches absolutely so and then so then after that we had we had a, a pop promo which was at least to me very blink and you'll miss it because i literally like turned around to go say something to alice and that was it i mean i saw Pac standing there i just seen all ominous <laughs> you're right I, but that was it no and the purpose of this promo was to basically continue and let us know that hey okada and Pac are about to destroy each other on <laughs> dynasty which i'm excited for i think that match is going to be fantastic the Pac is going to show okada he shouldn't be taken lightly so i'm excited for that which leads into another fun <laughs> match of mine for me personally this was probably my favorite match of the evening but this is a aew women's world championship eliminator match timeless tony storm taking on azami of stardom and, you know, her faction of Queen's Quest, this was so good. I loved it so I, much. I love seeing the Stardom Girls be more and more prevalent on AEW television. So good. I th I thoroughly enjoyed this match. Yeah, I um, this right now uh, is my match of the night. Uh, you know, it, yet again, it, it, it showcases how the women's division should not be taken lightly. Uh, you know, and you should book more women's matches because they just came out and they put everything in it. You know, uh, I, I actually felt 
um, for a little bit that uh, Azumi, right? That's her name, Azumi. Um, that Azumi was 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 going to win, you know, and then be able to cash in on on that uh, on that title uh, attempt at, at a later date. Uh, you know, a lot of great. Um, the two different styles really complemented each other, you know, where you had Azumi's quickness and you had Tony Storm's strength and both were showcased and it didn't feel like one uh, was uh, getting put over the other. But at the same time, it felt like Azumi, uh, you know, came out put over in this match. Oh, absolutely. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. Again, the Stardom Girls were my favorite part of Super Card of Honor. So if you watch anything, well, I mean, you're going to watch it later, but definitely the opener of the main card and then the six women tag uh, for the Stardom Girls that happened afterwards ended up being my two favorite matches of the evening, which was fantastic. And I mean, Tony does win here, but man, this was a fantastic back and forth. And I agree with you, Adolfo. There were moments where I thought Azumi, <laughs> Azumi was going to win. But unfortunately, she did not. But Tony is the victor here. This was a fantastic match. We then cut to more backstage promos. <laughs> because we had two different ones. The first one was Red Velvet. And she was asked, you know, you know, Athena had a lot to say earlier in the show. How do we feel about her, you know, and her thoughts? And Red Velvet basically tells Lexi that... Athena likes to talk a lot. She should not underestimate her and that she is going to whoop Athena up and down the ring. And that is the extent of her promo, which then we cut to commercial. And then when we come back, we get a backstage promo from Mark Briscoe. Everybody was into weird, ominous lighting this whole entire episode. It was in the dark. It was in the back. They were trying to be right? like a hot topic, <laughs> like a hot topic of a promo. They just found the back and just turned on like one light and tried to be ominous. But Mark Briscoe is the same thing. He is talking about the six ta person tag that's coming up on Dynasty. The House of Black doesn't know what's ready for that because the I they keep changing their tag team name. But Chicken Kung Fu is in full effect. And Mark Briscoe ends the promo by doing his thing of barking at the camera. <laughs> Yeah, the red red velvet spot was um, I felt was good. It was short, concise, and you know she said what she had to say about the match that she had coming up with Athena. Boom, done. Um, the Mark Briscoe. I mean, I'm excited to see this six man tag, uh, but at the same time, um, I feel like this is a spot that they didn't need. You know, um, yeah, I feel like this is a spot that they didn't need. Uh, like, I, I guess they were just reminding people that this is going to be a thing on Dynasty. Uh, I feel like if anything, this spot could have been done, it could have been done better. Uh, and I, I get it that like Copeland and Kingston uh, were probably all in different locations, but at, I would have much preferred uh, a spot with the three of them in dark moody hot topic lighting uh you know calling out the house of black as opposed to mark briscoe uh because I, I just i it, it makes me feel like mark briscoe is still like the the lone man on this island against the the, the house of black yeah it's very interesting but i'm you are correct i am still excited for the six person tag that we're getting at dynasty and i think it's going to be a fun one we then get the announcement that the Bucks versus FTR for the vacant AEW Tag Team Championships is now a ladder match for some reason. Weird. And I'm just and I'm Weird. just like, uh, okay. I mean, I'm not mad, but where in storyline does this make sense? Right. Weird. I mean, we 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 touched on it briefly in the Rampage uh, review. Uh, it, it it's almost as if AEW is like, what draws in more reviews? Our ladder matches. So we're gonna make this a ladder match. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, I I was fine with FTR and Young Bucks going at it, uh, especially this new iteration of Young Bucks. Um, but now that it's a ladder match, um, 
Well, well let me put it this way. Does, <clears throat> does it take anything away from, from the match? No. Does it necessarily add anything? Not really, especially for these two, because we've, you know, we've seen uh, Young Bucks in a ladder, table, chair, whatever match when they went against Sting and, uh, and Darby. Um, and we've seen FTR uh, in a ladder match. Uh, what pay-per-view was that? Where it was them and House of Black and... Uh, that would be at Full Gear, and I should know, because I was right, there live. <laughs> right, at Full So, like... Unless this is now going to be the new norm that the AEW tag team belts are sold in a ladder match, uh, which I think would be a cool, you know, little like thing uh, to, 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 to kind of make a thing, you know, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it was interesting to say the least. Uh, so from here. We get our final backstage segment of the evening. Don Cal's family once again. It's been really weird to because we've seen a lot of Don Cal's family within the last 24 hours, <laughs> which was kind of wild to see. Kyle but, Fletcher actually was able to keep the laughs in this time. Yes, which Kyle Fletcher's a menace. I love him so much. Um, It's basically the same promo that we got on Rampage. They're going to break. They're going to break, you know, BCC and what's left of it. Which then leads us into our, to me, a very, yes, to our fun main event, a tag team match, Blackpool Combat Club of Claudio Castagnoli and Brian Danielson taking on the Don Cowles family, which is being represented by Kyle Fletcher and Powerhouse Hobbs. This was a lot of fun. That's the best way to describe it. I was like, I was thoroughly entertained by this match. Yeah, totally a fun match. Um you know, not, it wasn't, if you were looking for your Brian Danielson technical fix, this isn't it. Uh, if you were looking for your just like big, big men slapping man meat, uh, this, this, this was, this was it, you know. Um, this was, I was thoroughly entertained with the whole entire thing. You're absolutely right. This was not technical. This was just man meat slapping man meat. Yeah, you you know you didn't have Brian Danielson getting technical. I mean, you had flashes of it when he was in there with uh, um, with Kyle Fletcher, uh, but uh, it really didn't dwell on that. It didn't dwell on Kyle Fletcher uh, and his high energy uh, techniques. Um, you know, it was it was just a, a fun, like chaotic match, uh, which at the end then turned into. Uh, the House of Black doing what they said that uh, I'm sorry, House of Black. Uh, the uh, the uh, the um, Don Callis Don family, Cal's family uh, doing what the Don Callis family said they were going to do, uh, and um, put down Brian Dan. Well, not put down, but you know, lump up Brian Danielson, and Claudio Castagnoli to protect the Golden Goose because we need the Golden Goose to be protected. Golden Goose, yes, Golden Goose and 2024. This is- Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. And Bullet, not Bullet Club, Blackpool Combat Club pick up the, there's too many factions with B names. BCC picks up the victory here, but it was a short lived victory because then Konosuke Takeshita comes down and just cleans house. And then the trio lay out Danielson and Castagnoli to end the show. That brain buster onto Danielson, though, he sold that beautifully. I legit got worried a little bit, but he's fine. He's fine, but it yeah, seems, well, I mean. What, what was it the- I said to you last night uh, when we were switching to watch uh, Battle of the Belts? We have time. They're scraping the Blackpool Combat Club, Combat off. Club off the mat. <laughs> Which, I mean, essentially, that's what it was. So we're going to give our ratings at the end, but we do briefly – are going to talk about Battle of the Belts because we had a three-hour collision this entire week, basically. So we're not going to spend too much time on Battle of the Belts. We're just going to quickly go through the first things, but I do want to give time to our main event because that was the best match of the whole entire evening. So as they were scraping the remnants of BCC off of the mat (laughs) for what happened, Battle of the Belts 10 opens up with an FTW championship match between Shane Taylor and Hook. So this is the culmination of what we've gotten pretty much this whole entire last two weeks 
on AEW television. I thought the match itself was okay. Shane Taylor looking like a beast throwing hook and then punching him super hard. Yeah. And I was thoroughly entertained with the finish because hook had to choke Shane Taylor out to win. And those follow away slams that he was able to do on Shane Taylor was impressive as hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the match was, uh, it was entertaining. Um, the only thing I kind of got a little tired about was hook just getting beat up and like standing up after the beat down. Hang on one second. Um, so yeah, the thing that I, three, two, one, the thing that I grew tired about was, uh, hook getting the shit kicked out of him and like getting back up and then like getting the shit kicked out of him again. Like, cause we've seen that already with Samoa Joe. Uh, we've seen that with a bunch of his man uh, with, um, uh, with Swolverine, my boy Swolverine, you know, we've seen that with him. Like, all right, we, we, I feel that if you're going to use that as a storytelling method, um, that should be reserved for like, for, uh, not used as often as, as it has been and, and kind of become hooks shtick. You know, because uh, he is he is a good wrestler. You know, I, I feel that we can you can showcase how good of a wrestler he is uh, without having him getting the shit kicked out of him for like nearly 15 minutes and then like choking the dude out. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. So Hook is still our FTW champion. This was a pretty it was a decent match, but I agree with Adolfo. I would like to see them change the structure when it comes to hook in terms of not getting beat up for the majority of the match and then like calling on the D and D fighter skill second win to come in to win the match, which was kind of nuts. Then we go backstage. Rocky Romero cuts his final promo before he walks out of the ring. First and foremost here at BC wrestle pod. We always love the fashion that our wrestlers are wearing and Rocky Romero had some great ring gear this evening So Rocky is walking downstage, which gives us our second match for Battle of the Belts. This is not even an international championship match. This is an eliminator match between Rocky Romero and Roderick Strong. This is for the chance to Rocky to face Roderick for the title. And see, I can't hate this match. I like this match because we got to see Rocky Azucar Romero in the ring. And I feel like he doesn't get used a lot on AEW. My biggest issue with this is that Rocky was in control most of this match, and then one knee strike and at one the end is what and... was doom. Yeah, I uh, also also my my issue is like if it's just an eliminator match, there let the champion lose if it's just an eliminator match. You know, we had two eliminator matches this uh, tonight, and both were great matches. <clears throat> this match with with Rocky Romero and um, Roddy Strong. Um, great match, you know, entertaining matches, but like, why even do the match if you're not going to give the person the chance down the line? You know, uh, I understood it with Azumi a little bit more, uh, you know, that she, that she didn't win, uh, because she, you know, she's, she is brand new and this was more just like to, to showcase her. Uh, but with Rocky Romero, come on. Uh, yeah i i felt so bad yeah. for rocky so what happened afterwards though was somewhat important because we get the undisputed kingdom celebrating with roddy in the ring kyle O'Reilly comes out he celebrates with roddy but then he's also checking on rocky and then <laughs> wardlow attacks R- rocky which then proceeds to have roderick attack kyle so Kyle and Roddy are no longer friends, which we get later in the evening. We have an international championship match at Dynasty between Kyle and Roderick. So at least we got that. Yay. Yeah. I mean, I I guess it's the 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 forwarding of, of this storyline. Um I hope that it has payoff in and even though I'm I'm not too hip on people coming right back into 
uh, wrestling promotions and winning championships. I, I do hope that uh, maybe uh, Kyle O'Reilly will get the W um, in this match to get the Intercontinental belt uh, from Roddy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I Yeah. That's all. That's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah. So... We get a backstage segment with the professor, Serena D, who talks about how she's sitting pretty at number three right now, but she's going to continue to climb up those ranks. And gosh, Tony Khan, please let Serena D make it to the number one spot within the next couple of weeks slash month or two. I would love to see Serena go after a championship match because I think she deserves it. Which then leads us into our main event for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship. We have Athena defending her title against Red Velvet. Easily the best match of Battle of the Belts 10 for me. This was so a good. hard-hitting, fantastic so bout between both of these women. Gosh, it was so great. Yep, And uh, Red Velvet, true to her word, she, she beat the crap out of Athena in and out of the ring. Uh, you know, uh, Athena did get the win. She did retain, but like, it was a great match. It. it was a great yeah, match. It was a great match. And it was the always good storytelling when there are moments in the match that you're like, oh, is the champion actually going to lose? Uh, which, uh, there was, you know, in this match, there was a lot of that. Oh, is Athena actually going to lose? You know, and then you get your one, two, ooh. Um, but it was, you know, great match. Uh, clean win. Uh, we didn't have any uh, interference from Ricky Starks. Uh, uh, Ricky Starks. Um, from Billy. Billy Starks. From Billy Starks. Again, too many people with Starks in their last <laughs> name. Right. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we didn't have any interference from Billy Starks. Uh, we just had a really powerful, powerful uh, finish from Athena. Um, and unlike uh, the match earlier with um, with Asuka and, and Roddy Strong, uh, you know, it was a back and forth. And it wasn't just like a power move that won the match for Athena. You know, it, it culminated. It built up, built up, built up, and then culminated. Uh, to Athena's finisher, um, the O face, and um, and she retained, and it was a good match. It was a good match, and then we got the setup to end Battle of the Belts ten, which was fantastic. Billy Starks and Athena beat up on Red Velvet. They tried to go for you know the spot where Athena does a stomp into the belt of her opponent, but who should come out to save Red Velvet and beat up on Billy and Athena? But Queen Aminata herself. She's a queen. And she still has beef with Billy Starks with what happened at Supercard of Honor and how that match went. So we are continuing Queen versus Billy and Athena, which is fantastic. So we've reached the end of this three hour block of AEW television for this weekend. So technically we are reviewing Collision, but we have to view the whole three hours since we did watch all of it. If I'm including Battle of the Belts with this, I'm going to give this a solid 7.5 out of 10 for this week's Collision. I thought if I thought Collision was a solid show, the main event for Battle of the Belts was great, but what kind of ruined it for me was some of the pacing because we had promos to advertise for Battle of the Belt, which threw the pacing of Collision off just a little bit, but the wrestling on Collision is always solid. It's just there's certain things that we still need to work on, but solid seven and a half for a three hour AEW programming block. Yeah, I'm going to give it a straight seven. Um, I've said this before and I will say this again. I don't give half empanadas because what the hell's a half empanada on my plate? If it's not in my tummy. Um, the pacing, definitely an issue. Uh, me personally, the wrestling was good. Um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do that thing where I'm trying to separate myself from uh, actually, you know, fan of wrestling and watching wrestling and being a, you know, my journalistic integrity. Uh, all solid matches. Uh, personally, uh, some of the matches, not the way that I wanted them to end, uh, but they were still entertaining. Uh, and I'm excited for this upcoming week of uh, AEW uh, TV. Which me and Adolfo are going to talk about off camera because we got to figure some stuff out. 
But thank you for enjoying this special coverage of a three hour AEW, you know, collision block that we had this past weekend. Um, if you enjoyed this review, you can check us out on the BC WrestlePod YouTube channel. You can check us out all over the social medias at BC WrestlePod. You can take us on the go now because we have audio podcast versions of everything that come out a day after the videos go up. So it's fantastic. And then, of course, if you want to see the East Coast Collective and myself at, you know, live and in person, you could check us out at the New Jersey Wrestle Show convention, which is going to be Saturday, May 18th and Sunday, May 19th. Adolfo is going to be there. JVL and Jesse is going to be there. And myself is going to be there, too. It's going to be a fantastic time. Come say hi, buy some merch, have a conversation with us. It's going to be such a great thing. But from us here at the Collision Collective and the rest of the BC WrestlePod boys, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, stay biconic, and more importantly, you deserve to finish your story. We'll catch you on the flip side, but until then, Billy Stark's outro. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Vibe Tribe production. What's going to happen next time? Well, you're going to have to tune in to find out. But until then, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, and as always, make sure that you keep the good times rolling. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next time.